So we've seen the three points up, the three major sections of fluid dynamics up to this point. We've seen pressure, we've seen buoyancy force, and we've seen um, Bernoulli's equation. We're going to do an example using Bernoulli's equation. We're going to look at how to get IV fluid into a vein. So you go to the hospital, they put an IV in you. How, why do they do certain things? So the question is, how high do we have to lift the IV to make sure that it flows into a person's arm? So we have this wonderful little IV uh, fluid, so we're going to put it into one of these veins in your hand. Well, we need, again, some additional information. And one of the things that you got to think about is that you, know, you give yourself a cut, you start to bleed. If you cut an, a vein, you're actually going to start actively pushing blood out of your body. That's because the veins have some pressure, some gauge pressure, so we, a vein will have somewhere between 2 to 15 millimeters of mercury, not a lot of pressure. Uh, again, atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury is atmosphere, so we're, we're quite low pressure, but there is still some pressure inside the veins um, that you have to deal with. So when we put an IV in, the fluid does not naturally want to flow into it. The fluid actually wants to be pushed out of the vein. So we have to figure out how can we put an IV in and have the fluid flow into the vein. Well, if you've ever been to the hospital or watched a show that has IVs on it, you know that they have this wonderful little IV tree that they put it in. It's raised up a certain height. So they accomplish this by raising up a height. So we take... The, the problem that we're going to try to solve is taking the characteristics of the IV fluid up here and relating it to the characteristics of what we have to have at the, the needle of the IV when we actually put it in. So we have some pressure for the IV, some static pressure. It's going to probably be atmospheric pressure because we're not pressurizing this area up here. Uh, the IV may have some velocity, it's going to, this top surface may be flowing down at a specific velocity, but IVs tend to be slow, so we probably can neglect that term. It's going to have some height, we're going to raise this thing off the floor or above where the IV enters, and then we're going to look at what happens at the needle. So the needle is going to need some pressure. It's going to need a pressure higher actually than this, this, this pressure, so we'll, we'll make sure that that happens. We may have a velocity term, depending on how fast the fluid we need to flow into the body. There might be a velocity term here we have to uh, account for. And it's going to have a different height. So let's make some assumptions. Let's say that this pressure is going to be atmospheric pressure, that the fluid is not going to be going down at any appreciable speed. So we can consider this kinetic energy term, or related term, to be zero. Zero velocity that the, the level of this will go down. Yeah, it's not true, but we're doing an approximation. And let's look at the height above. We're going to define y to be the height above the needle. So we look at the pressure of the needle. We're going to say, we're going to look at what's the pressure for 15 millimeters of mercury. We're going to have um, zero for the incoming velocity. It's going to be a slow drip in, and it's going to have a zero height component to it. We're going to be at the needle. We said the needle was at zero height. Well, we have to figure out, we, we rearrange things and we've realized that there's a change of pressure from the IV to the needle, and that is going to be this 15 millimeters. We need, uh, you know, the IV is at an atmosphere. This needle pressure is at a gauge pressure of this, so it's an atmosphere plus this. So the difference is going to be 15 millimeters. And it's going to be accomplished by raising this up some height. Solve for our IV height. It's going to be the change of the pressure, so that 15 millimeters of mercury, divided by the density of the fluid times G. We go through things. We have the 15 millimeters of mercury. We have 1 gram per centimeter cube. This is the density of water. It's, maybe, it's probably pretty close to what the density of the uh, IV fluid is, and we know that G is 9.8 meters per second squared. There's a couple of unit conversions in there. Assume that you guys can go through it, but really what it comes down to is you plug these numbers in and you get that the IV, 
the top of the IV, or probably somewhere around here, has to be greater than 20.5 centimeters. So it has to be a little over, you know, about a foot or so higher than where the needle is. So if you look at these trees, even the ones that you can push around if you get to walk around the hospital, they tend to have the IV around your head level where you keep your hand at a closer to your waist level. So the 25 uh, or the 20.5 centimeters is the pressure or the height that you need to be able to push in IVs into a vein. You don't put these into arteries because arteries have higher um, pressures. So it's easier to put something into a vein than it is to put it in directly into the artery. So kind of a fun little example, but it's a very good uh, way to describe how to use Bernoulli's equations. And again, we made some approximations. We said that the fluid flows were very negligible, the velocities were zero. If we wanted to push in this uh, the fluid at a much higher rate where it's noticeable, then we have to start adding in these other terms. If the level drops significantly because we're pushing in the fluid at a fast level, we would have to add in all of these terms. So it's not that hard to do, just got to be careful. Make sure you go through and do all of your final or your initials and then all of your finals and make sure that you've accounted for everything.